Hi, I'm Kathy. In this lesson, we're going to solve quadratic equations and inequalities. Our specific objectives are the zero product property, solving x squared equal k, the quadratic formula, solving quadratic equations, and solving quadratic inequalities. Let's start with the definition of a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation in one variable is an equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are real numbers with a not equal to zero. This is a quadratic equation in standard form. Here's some examples. These are examples of quadratic equations not only, well, none of them are written in standard form. The first one says 5x squared equals 50. The second is 6 minus 4x plus x squared equals 0. The third is 5 times x minus 2 squared equals 1. And they can all be manipulated to a quadratic equation in standard form. The first technique we want to use to solve quadratic equations is called the zero product property. Let's look at that. The zero product property. If a and b are complex numbers and a times b equals 0, this means a times b, then a equals 0 or b equals 0 or both. Let's work an example and see how this can be used to solve a quadratic equation. What we want to do is solve the equation 2x squared plus 4x minus 16 equals 0. The equation is already set equal to 0, which would be our first goal. Now what I want to do is divide each term by 2, which is a common factor in each term. Divide each term of the equation, every part of the equation actually, by 2. Simplifying, I have x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor this quadratic, and it factors into x plus 4x minus 2 equals 0. According to the zero product property, if I have two things multiplied, in this case x plus 4 times x minus 2, set equal to 0, then either the first factor is 0 or the other factor is 0 or both. Setting each factor equal to 0 and solving, I see that x equal negative 4 or x equal 2 are solutions to the equation we should write our solution set, negative 4, 2. Another technique for solving quadratic equations is called the square root property. Let's look at that property. Square root property. The solution set of x squared equal k, and this is the type of quadratic equation for which we would use the square root property, is either plus or minus the square root of k, if k is bigger than 0, a positive number, exactly the set containing 0, if k is 0, and the set positive and negative i square roots of the absolute value of k, if k is a negative number. Well, let's try some examples using the square root property. What we want to do here is find all solutions, real or imaginary, of each quadratic equation. And I just have one at the moment written on this sheet. I want to solve x squared equal negative 18. Well, according to the square root property, x is going to be plus or minus the square root of negative 18. And I need to simplify the square root of negative 18. Actually, rewrite it. Rewriting that, I know that 18 is 9 times 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. When I see a negative in a square root, I know to use the symbol i to represent the square root of negative 1. And still, in the square root is the square root of 2. Remember, 9 times 2 is 18. These are the two solutions to the quadratic equation using the square root property. Our solution set contains positive and negative. 3i square roots of 2. Let's solve another equation using the square root property. Let's solve the equation 3k minus 1 squared equals 12. Well, according to the square root property, 3k minus 1 is positive or negative the square root of 12. 
Let's take a step, a step to simplify the square root of 12. 12, as you know, is 4 times 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I can write 3k minus 1 is plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. I want to solve for k, so I'm going to add 1. 3k is 1 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. And finally, since again I'm solving for k, I divide by 3. And I say that the solutions to the equation are 1 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 over 3. The solution set is that pair of numbers. Well, there's a third technique that I'd like to go over with you for solving a quadratic equation, and that's called the quadratic formula. Let's look at that. The solutions of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a is not equal to 0, are x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. It's important to note that the quadratic equation is in standard form in that there's 0 on this side or on one side of the equal sign. a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant. Let's try the quadratic formula. Here's an example. Let's solve the equation by the quadratic formula. We want to find all solutions. The equation we have is 1 3rd t squared plus 1 4th t minus 3 equals 0. Well, looking at these fractions, I can use them in the quadratic formula, but it might be convenient to clear them and not have to deal with fractions in the quadratic formula. The common denominator of 3 and 4 is 12, so I'm going to multiply every part of the equation by 12. That gives me 4t squared plus 3t minus 36 equals 0. And now I want to put the numbers into the quadratic formula. Let me rewrite the formula. x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is 4, b is 3, c is negative 36. Substituting those numbers into the formula, x is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 36, all divided by 2 times 4. And we need to continue simplifying this expression. I've rewritten it at the top of the next page, here we are. Let's continue mostly simplifying what's in the radical. x is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. Now the next term is minus a negative or plus. 4 times 4 times 36 is 576, all over 8. Now adding those two numbers together, I get the square root of uh, 585. Now using your calculator, you should um, try to find a perfect square factor of 585. It turns out that it's 9 times 65. Taking the square root of that 9, I can write 3 square roots of 65 for that part. And so x is negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared to 65 over 8. Those are the solutions to the quadratic equation. We should write the solution set, negative 3 plus or minus 3 square roots of 65 all over 8. Well, now it's time for you to try a problem. Why don't you pause the video and work the following problem, then restart it when you're ready to check your work. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to solve the equation using the quadratic formula and find all the solutions. Well, let's see how you did. Here's the equation we want to solve. We need to write it in standard form. I'll distribute an x to get x squared minus x equals 1. Then subtract 1 to set the equation equal to 0. And now I'm ready to substitute into the quadratic formula. I'll use 1 for a, 
negative 1 for b and negative 1 for c. x is going to be negative what b is, which is negative 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared, b squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Continuing to simplify, x is positive 1, negative, negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1, minus 4 times negative 1 is going to be plus 4, all of that over 2. And so 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2 are the solutions to the quadratic equation. The solution set is 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Well, let's continue by looking at a quadratic inequality. Here's what we want to do. We want to solve each inequality analytically using a sign graph, and we're going to give exact values for the endpoints. Now, the first of two inequalities we're going to solve is x squared plus 4x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. It's a quadratic inequality. What we do is solve the quadratic equation x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Now this quadratic factors into x plus 3, x plus 1. According to the zero product property, I can set x plus 3 equal to 0 and see that one solution to the equation is negative 3. Set x plus 1 equal to 0 and a second solution to the equation is negative 1. However, this is an inequality. These two become boundary values, and we're going to make a sine graph to find the solutions to the inequality. That works like this. On a number line, I locate negative 3 and negative 1. And then I evaluate each factor, x plus 3 and x plus 1, for values in each region of the number line um, divided by negative 3 and negative 1. What I mean is, in this region is a number like negative 4. There's many numbers, but let's use negative 4. If I put negative 4 in this factor, I get a negative value. If I put negative 4 in this factor, I get a negative value. In between negative 3 and negative 1 are numbers like negative 2. Putting negative 2 in this factor, I get positive 1, a positive value. Putting negative 2 in this factor, I get a negative value, negative 1. To the right of negative 1 is the number 0. There's many numbers. One such number is 0. Putting 0 in this factor, I get positive 3. Putting 0 in this factor, I get positive num. No, uh, excuse me, positive 1, a positive number. Now what I see here is the product of the two factors. The product of the two factors, if they both are negative in this region, is going to be a positive number. So I'm going to write positive for this particular region. The product of a positive number and a negative number is going to be a negative number. The product of a positive and a positive number is going to be positive. And I'm ready to determine the solution set to the inequality. I would like to keep the region, which gives values when substituted into this inequality, that are greater than or equal to 0 or positive. That's all the numbers. Um, to the left of negative 3, including negative 3, and to the right of negative 1, including negative 1, positive values. So the solution set is two intervals. The interval from negative infinity to negative 3, including negative 3. The interval from negative 1 to positive infinity, including negative 1. And we find the union of those inequalities. Excuse me, intervals. Now there's a second inequality that I want to solve, 
that's related to this one. So we have to keep this sine graph in mind as we look at a second inequality. And our second inequality is x squared plus 4x plus 3 less than 0. The same quadratic, but we want to describe the region that makes it less than 0. If you look back at our sine graph, the quadratic is less than 0 between negative 3 and negative 1. Let's write that interval down. The solution set to that inequality is from negative 3 to negative 1, not including either endpoint, since the equal to is not attached to this inequality. Well, in this lesson, we've looked at quadratic equations and inequalities. Be sure to work lots of exercises from your textbook for practice.